Thank you for joining me for the next segment in this continuing series on the book of Revelation. I believe that slideshow started at the second slide. That's, I wonder how it did that. Okay, my name is Alfred Eugene Pearl. We're looking at the sixth seal. Uh, this is the seal that introduces the day of the Lord. The events of this seal are referred, referred to numerous times throughout the Bible. And it's uh, the day of the Lord, the beginning of the day of the Lord. Um, this is part two. In the first uh, section, we looked at the first seven items, uh, the seven events of the sixth seal. And, we, and I attributed them all to a single causation. But uh, it's all speculation. It's all guesswork because all these things are yet future. And uh, my guess isn't any better than yours. Uh, I attributed them to a... Uh, that our sun has a binary star and it will enter our atmosphere in... <clears throat> I misstated. Not our atmosphere. Our solar system. Uh, in a few years. Uh, I believe 2018, after Israel has been a nation for 70 years. But again, uh, this is future. All I've got is a hypothetical model. And when the reality of these things comes to pass... All hypothetical model models are going to seem silly. So it's kind of moot looking at all these future things, but at least we can put them in perspective and uh, organize them a little bit. That gives you a, a structured way of viewing the book of Revelation. So let's proceed. Okay, these are the this is the second six uh, things. Now, I don't believe these are all due to, this, to the uh, common causation. Now, the third item on the wind there, I said might be due to the um, the same causation as the first seven, uh, but it does indicate that an angel is holding back the wind, so it may not. It, it may not be of natural causation. It could be indeed an angel holding it back. I don't know. Uh, it's all future. Okay, let's uh, jump in. Now, you've all seen this graphic. Uh, this is uh, out of Genesis 2, where God uh, planted a garden eastward in the land of Eden, a uh, river came out of Eden, watered the garden, and from there it divided into four heads. And uh, the Pison flowed into the land of Havilah, the Hittichel, eastward into Assyria, the Gihon, into Ethiopia, and the Parath. It doesn't say where it flowed, but because Eden was already introduced as the land where God planted the garden eastward in that land, I just connected those dots. Um, so, I believe the Parath flowed into Eden, and that gives us a four-parted earth, these four areas of land bordering the Garden of God, uh, and of course the rivers. Now, uh, where, why am I showing you this prophecy in Zechariah 14.4? Um, this event where uh, the Messiah's feet stand on the Mount of Olives when he returns probably won't occur uh, for quite some time. It's not going to occur at any time during the trumpets or the thunders. It, it doesn't occur before uh, uh, the Lord returns in triumph and great glory uh, on a white horse uh, dispatching his enemies from the earth. And uh, that'll be uh, way after the goal, in, way back in, 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 I think it's Revelation 19. Uh, why am I introducing this now? Well, I want to uh, establish something here. Uh, his feet will stand that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst, and toward the east, and toward the rest, west, and there will be a very great valley. And the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Now, this next passage is just two verses later. Okay, so my math teacher wasn't that good. Four verses later. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, half of them toward the hinder sea. In the summer and the winter shall it be now. Okay, his feet shall stand that day upon the Mount of Olives. I personally believe that when Adam and Eve sinned and were, and were removed from the garden of God, the power of God stopped flowing through them to maintain the geological forces of the earth. Now, if you recall, the Garden of God, this river came out of this one location, divided into four heads, and watered the face of the earth. <clears throat> that river doesn't flow today. 
Now I believe the force that caused that river to come out was mag magnetohydrodynamic. In other words, the magnetic field of the Earth was so intense following the creation of the Earth, it caused this river to flow. Water, particularly water uh, with mineral substrates in, in solution, uh, responds to, to a magnetic field and can be propelled by magnetism. And I believe this river came out of the Earth at this one place uh, responding to uh, that magnetohydrodynamic effect. Now, when the Lord's feet touch on the Mount of Olives, He is the one who paid for and bought back everything Adam lost, including the ability to replenish and subdue the earth and its geological forces. So this river, uh, the magnetic field of the earth is, re earth is restored when his feet touch the earth. He is at that point uh, the one who supplants Adam. Why is this significant? Because this establishes where on earth the Garden of Eden had been. The waters go out from Jerusalem. Blank slide. Okay, I meant to put in there that uh, a, a slide showing Jerusalem. It is a four-parted city. Uh, Jerusalem is a, is a city in four parts. Uh, today there's a, a, a Jewish sector, a Jewish quarter, I should say, a, a Christian quarter, a Muslim quarter, and an Armenian quarter. But um, according to my understanding, it's it's always been a city, uh, you know, of four parts, and um, that's the reason reason for that, uh, because that is where the Garden of Eden once stood. That's where the river came out from, and um, so these four angels, when it says they're standing on the four corners of the earth, uh, if you remember from a previous slide, we. Uh, uh, we went over the fact, I'm going to go flip back to that slide, there it is, uh, whoops, um, uh, the, the corners, the four corners of the earth are not outside corners of a square, uh, the ancients were uh, not so stupid that they thought the earth was square and flat, these are the inside corners of an intersection, uh, even today most cities require a directional indication in the address so that uh, they can be delivered to the correct quarter of the city. Uh, cities are divided north and south and east to west by central avenues and boulevards, whereas the early earth was divided north and south and east to west by these four rivers. So four corners of the earth became a common cliche uh, referring to uh, the whole earth. They had the four corners of the earth everywhere on the earth. So the four quarters have an intersection. So these angels standing on the four corners of the earth, they're standing in Jerusalem. And in a minute you'll see why that's significant. Uh, angel ascending from the east. <clears throat> okay, here's the throne of God, here's the camping order or the marching order in the wilderness. Now, these tribes were placed at compass points relative to the, uh, the tabernacle and the tribe of Levi in the center. Uh, Reuben was south, Dan north, Ephraim west, Judah east. That's why I placed these living creatures around the throne of God in this manner. So here we have uh, the points of the compass are being associated with uh, these four principal tribes and more notably the living creature on their standards. Now we can arrange uh, the epochs of time in a spatial manner such as this. Uh, we, we've always put it in a, in a linear fashion because it is time and time is, time is linear. Time really doesn't lend itself to this kind of. Uh, but there is an association between uh, the Ad Adamic Age and Reuben who uh, lost his inheritance due to his uh, his sin. He was, you know, getting a little too familiar with one of his father's wives. Um, and of course, uh, the chosen people are associated with the ox, the only kosher of the four living creatures. Uh, Dan is associated with the eagle, which is uh, associated with Christ's, um, you know, ascension and uh, the church's resurrection. And the two witnesses of Revelation and of course the lion of the tribe of Judah is associated with the kingdom age. So that's why I arrange them like this, but this linear way of viewing at it, viewing it, we can still see the correlation and, and appreciate the parallels. So when we're talking about the East, we're talking about the, uh, the association with the Kingdom Age. So this angel came out of the East. And so now we know why. That's, this angel is um, sealing people who are destined uh, to the Kingdom Age. Uh, so they're sealed. 
Now, ceiling of the 144,000. Uh, not, not there yet. Okay, um, it says that all the tribes of Israel are, set, are sealed. And yet, if you look at the list, Dan is missing. Now, usually when, when all the tribes are listed, there's none missing. There's a shell game being played, and all the tribes are represented in the names, in the names uh, indicated. Even though uh, there's, only, there's 14 tribe names, listing 12 tribes usually gets them all. And if Levi's missing, it's because, you know, he doesn't go to war or uh, for some reason. Uh, but in this case, Dan is missing, and that's peculiar. Well, why is Dan missing? Well, it's because Dan is the tribe of the north, the tribe uh, associated with the church because the eagle is on a standard. So uh, Christians are, uh, as you see in the second uh, clause there, uh, we are sealed already with the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Uh, here's another passage that says we were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You see, the 144,000 are 12,000 from each one of the tribes of Israel. And Christians aren't sealed in this passage. In other words, Dan is missing because Christians don't need to be sealed. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. We don't need a subsequent sealing. We'll still be on the earth, but uh, like I said, I don't need to repeat it again. We don't need to be sealed. We're already sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay. Uh, let's see, well, where do I want to go with this? Um, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So it sounds like um, the vengeance of God that's coming is not intended for the servants of God. And of, of course, as indicated, Christians are already sealed, and the Jews are here sealed, these 144,000, uh, to protect them from the vengeance of God to be unleashed in the trumpets in the next chapter. Chapter? Well, the next seal. Uh, so now, that pretty much finishes up the events of the sixth seal. Now, when the se seventh trumpet, sorry, when the seventh seal is opened, the final seal, uh, the trumpets then uh, begin to sound. Now, there are only seven seals, no more seals. Whatever this is that is being opened is fully opened. So, uh, now we see what happens when that document is opened. Uh, and we'll see in um, the sixth trumpet that a, a mighty angel will make uh, seven pronouncements. But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So the sixth seal is um, transitional. Um, as we indicated, there are um, everything in this. In this speaks about Israel, it's, and it's because the seals, the first four seals, all had to do with the rebellion of the house of Adam. You know, these four ide world domination ideologies of rebellion, and the fifth seal, we have uh, the the prophecy of Genesis 49 and Jacob's prophecy because this is the latter days. That's what earmarks this as the latter days. That prophecy being fulfilled, or should I say those prophecies. We went over the prophecy over Joseph and the one over Dan, and we saw how the uh, world domination ideologies uh, got, were bitten on the heel and fell backward in a Christian nation represented by an eagle. And, uh, well, not the last one, not the green horse, but the, the, the first three. And... Um, <clears throat> Now as we move into the trumpets, we'll see how the nation Israel features prominently. And in this transitional sixth seal, we, we see already uh, Israel in view with the angel standing on the four corners of the earth, which is Jerusalem, and with the angel coming out of the east, that's the kingdom age, are reaching back to uh, seal these folks that are, in, that are uh, destined to a uh, position on the earth. Uh, all right, you know, I don't have any, anything else to say, so I'm just rambling at this point. God bless. I look forward to narrating the next segment, and I hope you'll join me then. Till then, God bless. Bye-bye.